Shades of Benga Online presents highlights from the story of Kenya's popular music in the 70-year period between the end of the Second World War and 2016. The series draws its inspiration from the definitive book Shades of Benga by Ketebul Music. Good evening, viewer, and welcome to yet another episode of Sheds of Benga online series. On this episode, we shall be talking about Omotibo music and paying tribute to the Omotibo music pioneer, George Mukabi. To play as in is the Nairobi City Ensemble, performing Toto Singuo by George Mukabi. I will be your host, Lucy Ilado. That was George Mukabe's Mtoto Singuo as performed by the Nairobi City Ensemble. And on this panel, we are joined by award-winning cartoonist Paul Kalemba, also known as Mado. He's also a music collector and one of the researchers of the book Sheds of Benga. Next is Celeste Swamiru. She is the first female cartoonist in the region, as well as a music enthusiast and collector. Thank you. And today we're also joined by Dr. Humphrey Jeremiah Ojuang. He's a senior lecturer in linguistics and anthropology at the University of Nairobi. 
He's also the thematic head of language, culture, and society at the Institute of African Studies in the same institution. Thank you. Thank you so much, gentlemen and ladies, for joining us today. Looking forward to a very interactive discussion. So perhaps we should um, get to know a little bit more about the history of Omutibo. And what better person to tell us than Mr. Mado? <laughs> OK, um, Omutibo is uh, synonymous with Western Kenya. But now, again, uh, just like any music uh, genre, it's a very long and complicated process to get to one. You know, it takes time and so on. Uh, Western Kenya is known for uh, lots of, you know, fanfare, music, dancing, and so on, you know. Um, moonlight, under the moonlight, and so on, uh, many festivals. Uh, uh, that's, that's a region that has produced Sukuti, the mm -hmm. Lipala dance, and, uh, and several others. So on the road, the long road to Omotibo, those are actually elements mm -hmm. within uh, uh, Motibo when it came by. And uh, when we go back, uh, back to just shortly uh, after the Second World War, we shall find that the music that I've mentioned, like Sukuti and so on, was, was widely accepted all over the place. Mm -hmm. But at that time, you know, missionaries had moved into those areas, and uh, what was going on is that uh, they were kind of hostile to people doing guitars, and so were uh, the elders, you know, in those villages. Yeah, we were, we were comfortable with, uh, you know, uh, our own stringed uh, equipment, like mm -hmm. uh, ishiriri, and uh, well, horns, other wind equipment, and so on. So uh, the guitar had already been now in introduced mm -hmm. within Western Kenya. And there are also influences from uh, early fellows like um, you know, the Congolese who are visiting, mm -hmm. who, are, who had come and come to Nairobi, like Edward Masengo and uh, uh, Bosco. These people exposed uh, local musicians to the kind of style and so on. But this is not to say that we did not have uh, guitar mm -hmm. playing. Yeah. That was already in place. Mm -hmm. Let me take up from, from John Mwale, because he was actually instrumental in uh, uh, the road to uh, Mutibo, and inspired uh, one guy who then appeared on the horizon, I should say, or in that vast theater of entertainment within uh, uh, the Western Kenya region, mm -hmm. and that was uh, George Mukabe. Uh -huh. So when he appears, and you know now this is a guy who's really credited with that, uh, he didn't really quite start it from scratch as such. He took it from the elements that I've just mentioned, and also by um, uh, being inspired by these are the names that we've looked at, he was able to pick up his guitar with quite a very Spartan thing, you know, mm -hmm. quite, let's call it primitive or something like that, uh, something that he had uh, created on his own, and, and uh, practiced, mm -hmm. like, you know, trying to do what those guys were doing. So you were self-taught? Yes, he was self-taught. Uh, one remarkable thing about him mm -hmm. is that he took, he took uh, whatever he was gathering, <laughs> turned it into, into his own thing and ran away, you know, physically, actually, virtually ran away with it and mm -hmm. created his, oh, his, his own thing. Mm -hmm. Omotibo, the, the, uh, the term itself comes from, uh, it's Kisa. Tiba, tiba is, um, yeah. it's more like, it's a word that mm. um, describes, you know, to get lost. Mm. Ah. And um, yeah. I guess because of the, mm. uh, the new instrument, the guitar, yeah. it was taking the youth by storm. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there was this notion that, you know, they were, they were getting lost. Mm -hmm. yeah. So... Um, the guitar and the new styles that uh, Motibo uh, that, that was coming up, uh, it was it, it was tibaying. <laughs> <laughs> so it was referred to as Omutibo. Mm -hmm. Yes, but it's and ironic because it's a bad yeah, thing. Yeah. It's it, it was a bad thing, but he took it and exactly yeah. and embraced actually, it as strictly, a good strictly good strictly speaking, thing. Yeah. Omutibo should have some kind of negative contortion yes. to, to it, yeah. but it's actually you can see the positivity that it has brought. Yeah. Now. Uh, I, I believe there's a word that uh, an administrative, administration chief said at that time that uh, when young people were flocking to uh, uh, listen to this guy, that guno no mutibo. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, as you said, mm -hmm. something that should something be discarded. Yeah. Then that asking. term, mm -hmm. mutibo, was associated with that music. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing about uh, 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 Mukabe is that he created a genre. You know, now the Moales aside and all these other influences, he, he comes out with his own style of music. Mm -hmm. And it's a definite style, it's got a beat, mm -hmm. which obviously takes like from uh, what I was saying about Luya music, there's mm -hmm. that heavy go, 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 highly danceable, yeah. you know, yeah, that kind of thing. You, you can't sit and listen to it. 
you will have start doing your mapeka, as they call it, or uh, 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 rise up and move your entire body. So he had that. So you can imagine that he was tantalizing the village, you know, mm -hmm. and on a crude kind of uh, piece of uh, music instrument. Mm -hmm. um, we normally say that uh, there are very few people who have created a genre of music. Mm -hmm. And some of them, if you may allow me to uh, mention, uh, uh, what comes into mind is someone like James Brown. Mm -hmm. You know, James Brown came up with something, mm -hmm. you know, soul music. Uh, and, uh, you know, that kind of, uh, the, the kind of uh, funky jazz that he had in the instrumentals that he did. Mm -hmm. uh, the other guy worth mentioning is Fela Kuti. Uh, though Fela, Fela is also like uh, Mukabi in a way, that he did not really just start his genre of music, that is Afrobeat, from mm -hmm. scratch. Mm -hmm. Of course not. He went, he went far back, he went back to Juju music of uh, mm -hmm. uh, early, uh, early last century. Mm -hmm. He took uh, the high life music of the 50s, 60s, and mm -hmm. 70s. And jazz. Yeah, and jazz, of course. He, he, he did jazz, he studied jazz. So uh, by combining that, he came up with his own genre of music. And that mm -hmm. goes for Mukabi, uh, Mukabi too. Mm -hmm. So he invented, actually invented mm -hmm. something that uh, uh, is still with us today. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah. So much to share. Um, Dr. Zhuang, I have an interesting question for you. Omutibo, um, do you come across it in your studies or do, do, you, do you take this, do, you, do your students study this genre? Yeah, good question. Uh, uh, we are interested at the Institute in our oral traditions, our oral literatures, and our oral, uh, oral sources of knowledge, as it were. And Omotibo is one, one of them. them. A very, very important genre in the study of music. So this area we are talking about, and for this particular program, which we are featuring, falls within the category of what I call ethnomusicology. Mm -hmm. Ethnomusicology is the study of music and how it relates to culture. So among the people we also looked at was George Mukabe. Unfortunately, George Mukabe died young, I think around 1963, under tragic circumstances. But despite his having left the scene quite early, his music, Obutibo has persisted. Mm -hmm. And more recently, I have been listening to his own son, who is continuing in the footsteps mm -hmm. of his father. Yes. Mm -hmm. So my students and I are interested in Western Kenya music. So we are quite keen on Omutibo. Great. I think yes. I'll, we'll get back to you later, mm -hmm. talk a little bit more about um, the genre and it, how it's been progressing over the years. Yes. Celeste. Beside the fact that you're also from Western Kenya, um, you're both from, all from, I am also from Western Kenya. Um, besides that, how did you develop the keen interest in, 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 in your indigenous, uh, in, in the sound, sorry, in the sound of um, Tibo? Okay. Um, for me, the, the biggest influence was when I was growing up. Um, I, I was raised in a family that was very much in touch with, with our culture, especially creatively and musically speaking. My dad, I remember, owned a guitar which he used to fiddle with here and there, trying to, you know, um, re redo the songs, the, the Mutibo songs. And um, those songs always played at home uh, over the weekends, on road trips, you know. On funerals, he'd, he'd be the one with the vinyls for the table, you know. So I, I grew up listening to them and by the time I was 10 I knew it all word for word, all the songs. Um, and uh, a lot of people find it strange because um, those songs were produced way before I was born mm -hmm. and yet I'm, I'm pretty familiar with them and I really connect with them. So for me my foundation was um, and my influence was right from my childhood. Mm -hmm. And um, Really, the, the, the lyrics and the philosophies behind, behind the songs, I mean, um, all along there's been an inner activist in me and, you know, just very curious, inquisitive. And some of those songs um, 
have very <coughs> inspiring messages, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, storytelling that really makes you think and wonder, why do they sing about these things? So for me, the interest then grew after that. And later on, when I, I became an adult, I actually started doing more research about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, here we are. Here we are. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, something else that I think you've, you've talked about the lyrics, and this was going to be a question for later, but I think you can answer it regardless. Um, having experienced the, the music wave since when you are 10 years old or younger up to now, what are some of the changes that you have seen, um, especially from, from musicians uh, in terms of composition, lyrics, the, the content of the song, like you mentioned? The thing about um, Umtibo is the simplicity. The storytelling is so simple, yet appealing, and, and, and you know, it, it just gets the story home. Um, there's also uh, poetry in there in a very simple, basic way. And, uh, and the way they, 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 they incorporate Luya language into the Swahili. You know, at that time, I would imagine probably um, there was no too much uh, fluency mm -hmm. in, in Swahili. Mm -hmm. So you'd find, I'd learn a bit of Luya through the, <laughs> their music, but I'd understand because I'm also fluent in Swahili. Yes. So um, having said that, a lot has changed. I mean, nowadays, people have different motivations to compose their lyrics. But back then, um, growing up mm -hmm. and listening to Mtibo, it was basically just about family life, mm -hmm. um, uh, ideals, and, and really just um, what was happening in the society mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that purity and simplicity it was very appealing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also maybe the stories that people could easily identify with. Yes, mm -hmm. um, there's that. And it's, it's a documentation of history. You get to learn about different events that happened during that time, uh, what happened to different people. You know, randomly they would mention someone in their song and they'd be curious, oh, who's that? <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a mix of um, all these nuances that just made uh, Om Tibo really... Um, you know, easy to, to listen to, to enjoy, mm -hmm. and appealing to all generations, mm -hmm. even as kids used to dance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, but about um, lyrics, mm -hmm. I've heard her sing one of those songs. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I was tempted to yeah. ask her, but I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> right. Now let's take a break and listen to Pombe by George Mukabe. Kulewa pombe uende mjini Taka kulewa pombe uende mjini Ukunya pombe unalewa Kisha kulewa bwana na mwisho ya kutorote Kunya pombe utalewa, ukisha kulewa kwa nana mwisho ya kutoroke Pombe, pombe, ukilewa, nilibaya sana Pombe, pombe Taka kulewa pombe uende manyata Taka kulewa pombe uende manyata Takunywa pombe utalewa Ukisha kulewa bwana na mwisho ya kutoroke Bye, Asana. 
kule wa pombe uende manyata Utaka kule wa pombe uende manyata Takunywa pombe utalewa Ukisha kule wa bwana na wisho ya kutoroke by George Mukabi as performed by the Nairobi City Ensemble. Um, uh, uh, Dr. Ojuang mentioned that um, he was very, um, he was excited when now um, Mukabi's son took over, Johnston, yeah. um, took over the father's, um, and started performing the father's music. So the question here is, I have watched him perform, I think, twice, and he's, He's um, performing his father's music. Yeah. Why do you think he never took time to compose his own music and decided to, to, to run away with his father's catalogue? Now, obviously, it was natural that uh, uh, Johnston was going to pick up, up after his father. I remember him uh, appearing in the, uh, in the early 1980s, mm -hmm. uh, singing alongside uh, uh, yeah, Malenia ah. on VOK TV. At that time, they had a special show, so that's actually was relatively young at the time. Malenya played with the father. Yes, before. Malenya played with the father. But uh, we should have mentioned earlier that uh, that that uh, the development of uh, Mutibo actually involved Malenya, uh, Jackton Malenya, and Jackton Malenya is uh, is named after the grandfather of one of also the people who shaped up uh, Mutibo, and that is that is Peter Kwabi. Uh -huh. Peter Kwabi's uh, grandfather is called uh, Malenya. Mm -hmm. Now Johnson. Actually, uh, we might not really have known his father that much because mm -hmm. of, uh, this is 63 when the father dies. Uh, so he must have obviously happened onto those songs later on in, uh, in the 60s as he grew and so on mm -hmm. because they were, uh, they were recorded, mm -hmm. this is recorded mm -hmm. material. Mm -hmm. And he got, it, uh, he got right into that. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, when uh, you uh, are operating under a father mm -hmm. who was a star, you shall remain under the shadow of that uh, parent for quite some time. The uh, examples are bound. So Johnson is pretty much the same. In fact, there are some uh, people who've come and recorded him here and mm -hmm. actually believe that they're recording Mukabi. Mm -hmm. So what about um, some of the, the early recordings of, of, of Mukabi? Maybe we can yeah. talk us about oh, some yes. of the, the yeah. popular songs. You see, Mukabi, unfortunately, had a very short but very intense uh, career. Mm -hmm. Uh, his first recording is back in 1956. It's called uh, Omulembe. Mm -hmm. Obviously, many Kenyans know that term to mean uh, it's a term of greeting, but it really means peace. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that was recorded in 56. Mm -hmm. And when he uh, teamed up with Jackson Malenya, uh, if I may say, Jackson Malenya in those songs is the one with a high pitched uh, um, uh, vocal mm -hmm. backing up uh, okay. uh, Mukabe's baritone which worked very well. That harmony was perfect. Uh, when they came together at last uh, in 57, that's when they record uh, the very famous song, Mtoto Sing War, mm -hmm. uh, which obviously was picked up by many other groups later on. That is actually what now sparked off his career, especially by the move to AGS, mm -hmm. African uh, Gramophone Stores, mm -hmm. where he was taken by the same Asayo Winamu that we've mentioned. Because mm -hmm. he was the, by then I think he was rising to become the A&R mm -hmm. uh, manager. Artist and repertoire manager. Yes, yes, yes. So he was uh, he used to scout around, but he was actually taken there by John Moale. Mm -hmm. So you can see that kind of cooperation at that time. Uh, John Moale was an older, well, slightly older uh, musician mm -hmm. who was like, okay, I've, I've listened to this young, uh, this young boy, you must come and record. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, what he recorded within that short period of seven years, um, it's, it's got quite a repertoire. Mm -hmm. It's large yeah. for, for seven years. 
Um, and each and every song that he produced was a hit. Was a hit. And you know, it's, it, it was because of his style. Mm. And if I may mention also that, um, remember that this is coming from one acoustic guitar mm -hmm. accompanied by percussion, mm -hmm. percussion composed of the Fanta bottle, tracker, mm -hmm. tracker, mm -hmm. that yeah. kind of uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, in some recordings, they were tapping on the, on the, on the desk in mm -hmm. the studio mm -hmm. to bring it to, to come up with that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Now on that guitar, what he did, um, if you've seen pictures of that, I think most in the audience have seen that. They had this thing that is known um, as the capo. So mm -hmm. he'd, yes. yeah, he'd, uh, he'd uh, whatever, I'm not very good in that area of mm -hmm. town. Mm -hmm. uh, he'd, uh, whatever, I think our musicians here in the Nairobi City Ensemble will, uh, will demonstrate that because I've seen them play that with that. So he'd, um, he'd cut off the, fret, uh, the fretboard, whatever, uh -huh. whatever they call that action. Yes. And you know, uh, take the, the notes to, a, to very high pitches. And what was really amazing was that uh, with, with a thumb and a couple of his fingers, he'll do the rhythm. Mm -hmm. And you know, you have to hold the rhythm. Mm -hmm. It has to, it's continuous. Mm -hmm. Then with the lower fingers on uh, line number two mm -hmm. and one, mm -hmm. he'd do the lead, the lead guitar. You know, those riffs and mm -hmm. so on and uh, the cycles and so on, mm. and sing mm. while Malenia was there backing up. It mm. was fantastic, absolutely mm -hmm. fantastic. Wonderful. I wasn't there, but mm. I've studied it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, do you have anything to yes. add? Yes. Um, and yes. just to add on to what Madhu said um, about the, this famous song that uh, the Mushrooms did for the wedding song. Yes. Watu, watatu, wali kwenda. A lot of Kenyans, a lot of people in the world don't know that actually the Mukabi version, which was the earlier version, mm -hmm. is actually a very sad funeral song. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a dirge. Mm -hmm. And um, the way it starts, it's so captivating, you know. Uh, if I may just quote the lyrics, sure. it, it goes something mm -hmm. like, um, Kweli Sisi Wana Kenya, Tuiko Mtabu, Tuombe Tu Mungu Atusaidie. When, I, when a song begins like that, you know, you know um, it's, it's a really sad situation. Mm -hmm. So I, I just thought it's important to add yeah. that so mm -hmm. that um, maybe people can go online and, and search for mm -hmm. Tommy Tabale. Mm -hmm. That's the title of the song. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, I understand it's the last okay. song he ever did. Um, I mean, the last song he did yeah. before, before passing. passing. Okay. Yeah. You know, it would be, it would be nice. Uh, Celestine is jumping a line. You know, I said I've listened to her before. <laughs> Because uh, there's a line that goes, uh, watu, 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 Uganda, yes. kufika, kilingili, kwa mazi, kwa matanga, ya kirigita. Yes. That is what the mushrooms changed to, uh, to a wedding song. Kwa harusi. Kwa harusi, ya, whatever that was. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, is that a good thing? <laughs> it depends on how you look at it. Mm. Yeah. It's not bad. Um, but it's also good for people to know the origins. Mm -hmm. mm. So um, that's why we're here. <laughs> yeah. Doctor, do you think it's, it's fair enough? It's to... fair, it's fair. Uh, when a funeral becomes a, a wedding, you see, you want to pass on a message. Mm -hmm. And by the way, in Lua or Luya uh, discourse, traditional discourse, they talk of funerals as weddings. I have heard of people saying, this is the last wedding. Mm -hmm. A funeral is, a, a funeral turns into a wedding. It's a, it's a ceremony, to, it's a ritualistic thing. And they talk of harusi mm yamwisho. -hmm. So I think this is why, this is where they changed it to make it a little lighter so that a dirge, which is supposed to be heavy and a dirge, which is supposed to be sad, can be lightened up, and then you express mm -hmm. better emotions mm -hmm. and happiness mm -hmm. and a bit of excitement. Mm -hmm. So it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. You can tell and retell and re retell mm -hmm. uh, narratives. Uh, narratives, songs. great. Yes. Um, um, about um, about uh, Mukabe's uh, catalog, sorry. Do you have a favorite, perhaps, that you like to use? Um... I have used those two. Okay. Uh, you see, I, until I got interested in Mukabe, I didn't know much about him. 
and I didn't know that he lived a very short life, and that his musical career was short but intense. So I am understanding Mukabi through his son, and I want to say something about that. You can't, you can't run away from your ancestors. You can't run away from your dynasty. In Kenya, people are talking of dynastic. <laughs> I am my father's son. You can't take it away from me. I am my mother's son. You can't take it away from me. I have my mother's genes, 50%, and my father's genes, another 50%. So I'm both my father and my mother. Uh, Mukabi son is simply doing the natural mm -hmm. because music is a talent which his father had mm -hmm. and he discovered that he had the same talent. Mm -hmm. And look at Ngugi Wathiongo's children. They are writers. Mm -hmm. So they are a family of creative writers. So I do agree that you can get out of, you can try to get out of the shadow of your parents, but you will not go very far. <laughs> All you can do is to modify modify what you have mm. and w what you inherited. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You said something very interesting there that you're hoping mm. that he would take it and make it into something unique and new mm. for his own. But yes. we're not seeing this happening. And uh, this is a trend with um, a lot more other genres yes. um, in the country. So what would you say uh, is the solution in trying to salvage the many genres that are at risk of extinction? I think that these classical pieces of musical mm -hmm. productions should be retrieved, mm -hmm. they should be recorded, they should be redone as originally as possible mm -hmm. using talented uh, Kenyans, mm -hmm. Kenyan musicians, mm -hmm. experienced ones, and also the upcoming ones. Mm -hmm. So I think that we would be doing this country great service by putting money in research. And I'm glad that this initiative by this group and my dear brother and friend Tabu and Ketebul and Singing Wells and all these other initiatives, they're individual, they're, you know, it's doing it out of passion. You artists are passionate about what you're doing, but we should structure. Mm -hmm. They say we should institutionalize the research. At the University of Nairobi, I would like to create, and I've already told my director, I would like to create uh, a special status unit with the title, or under the title, African Studies and Research Unit. And because my office is situated right inside the museum, the founding fathers of the Institute of African Studies knew what they were doing. Unfortunately, the younger people lost the vision. Mm -hmm. And I have had many struggles at the university. I've fought very many big wars at the university. We should be linked with the National Museums mm -hmm. of Kenya, mm -hmm. with the archives, and not just the National Archives. We also have, a, next to the University of Nairobi, two institutions in one. Mm -hmm. We have the Kenya National Theater, uh, but we are not using the hall. And then across the yard, we have the conservator. Mm. We should not be focusing on English music. I'm not saying we shouldn't listen to European music, American music, English music, but that conservator of music should also bring in African instruments. Mm -hmm. Correct. Like, and we should bring in Omutibo, we should bring in Orutu, Nyatiti, and we should teach our younger people these instruments. Mm -hmm. You see, the British system has what they call the Royal College of Music. What is our equivalent in Kenya? The National College of Music, grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, grade five, up to grade eight. So why are we not creating professional systems teaching our young people uh, using our indigenous musical instruments. Mm -hmm. So yes, that's part of my research. Mm -hmm. I, am still, I am still plowing what I call a lonely faro, but there are a few people who are ready to listen.
-hmm. to what I'm advocating for. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that if we reach to the, the president, Uru Muigai Kenyatta, who is a very good dancer, by the way, mm -hmm. Uh, he's a very good dancer <laughs> on stage. <laughs> he should appreciate Omutibo. Specifically, retrieve, reclaim, mm. revive, mm. conserve, and, 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 and document. I would love for my grandchildren who are below, below 10 to listen to George Mukabe and to listen to Daniel Owino Messiani mm -hmm. and to listen to Daudi Kabaka. Mm -hmm and to listen to all this great, and then teach history mm -hmm. through those pieces of music. Mm -hmm. And that's what Ogot say, says mm -hmm. in one of his books, that in music, you can learn history. In music, you can develop research methodologies or historiography. You know, he's talking at a very high level, but mm -hmm. we can bring it no. at a lower level, at primary level, at high school level, and then at post uh, mm -hmm. post secondary mm -hmm. uh, institution mm -hmm. institutional level. Mm -hmm. Wonderful! Yes, thank, thank you, you so much. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of things to think about there. Um, so just to wrap it up, um, I think we've talked about um, um, Kabi's life, and it's also important now to as you've been dropping hints that oh he died at an early age uh, tragically. So perhaps. But Mado, you'd like to share exactly how um, he, he met his demise. George moved to Nairobi. We've not mentioned that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's important that he recorded all his songs within Nairobi mm -hmm. and also uh, did live shows within Nairobi, Muduru, uh, Makongeni, and so on, along with uh, his, his mate, uh, Malenya. Mm -hmm. And they were quite a hit here and actually gave uh, the Congolese, whom you mentioned earlier, a run for their money. Literally. You know? Yeah, literally. That, that is it. Now, people started flocking there. These guys were playing, given better guitar work and so on. So these guys uh, became uh, celebrities. And now you can imagine there are celebrities in Nairobi. How about back home, you know, in the villages? They were super. They were mega um, uh, stars, mm -hmm. as it is. Mm -hmm. People would listen to them on radio. Then when they showed up in the village, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you can imagine somebody in 1957, when our good professor... Mm -hmm. uh, my good friend also of many years, Humphrey, was being born. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this guy is playing on radio. Mm -hmm. Now he's in the village. Uh, there, there were people who were flocking after him. Mm -hmm. Now, then as now, uh, that uh, celebrity status will go into somebody's head. Mm -hmm. And George actually happened to be, you know, he's a quite, quite a lanky fellow, you know? Oh, yes. He was, uh, uh, the pictures that we have seen, uh, he actually towers over Malenia, you know? Mm -hmm. So he was quite a guy. He didn't take any, any, any crap from anybody. And in the shows that he was doing in, um, in Makungini and uh, Muduro, you didn't, you, you didn't bring mess, <laughs> any mess in that concert because he was also the bouncer, you know. And uh, he was always equipped with a knife, uh, you know, his long sleeve, whatever. You know, he was long sleeve, but uh, you could still pick up the, the, the guitar. So he had that and also an axe. When he went home, he had an axe also. So in the concerts here, he actually kind of stabbed a couple of people. And when uh, the crowd reacted, he came up with a, a very popular tune. Mm. And people promptly forgot <laughs> the, 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 guy that, yeah, the guy that had injured. And, but you know, that kind of life is dangerous. Mm. So um, he was quite sometimes a, a pretty rough guy. So mm. it, it did happen um, in 1963. He had just recorded a song that Celestine had mentioned, yes. Tommy Tabale, yeah. uh, in, in Nairobi. Then uh, he had been paid, so he was doing very well. Uh, parked his guitar and went, uh, as we call it, shags, mm -hmm. that's up country. Mm -hmm. uh, he traveled by OTC bus. Uh, landing there early in the morning, uh, the, this account actually comes from uh, Peter Kwabi, who also helped that general. Uh, he landed at Kisa and walked home. This man had two wives and traditionally went to the, to the, to the yeah, house yeah. of the first wife. Mm -hmm. So kind of the next day, she, um, she was sweeping the houses, and mm. his, you know, his guitar was there. Mm. Um, you know, it's ironic that is that guitar that eventually led to uh, the mm. tragedy. Mm. Because as she was sweeping, you know, furiously, mm. she hit the guitar, it fell down, and line number one cut. Mm. And you know, if you know what line number one is, it is very thin. Ding! That one. 
Now, that meant, you know, it was hard to come by with those wires. That mm -hmm. meant that there was going to be no replacement. He was not going to, he was not going to do any concerts in the, in village. the village. So mm -hmm. he was very annoyed. But she knew he was going to be very annoyed. So even before he found that guitar she took off, he followed her there. Uh, the story goes from Peter Kwabi that uh, she was hiding the, uh, under the bed when he, when he found her. He dragged her out and started boxing her. Uh, she started screaming. Her father came. He started screaming too, because you know, he's a big guy and you can't stop him from hitting your daughter. your daughter. And at that time, it was the weeding se uh, season. People were out in the chambers, you know, weeding. And you know, when, it, uh, when you're weeding, you use sharp uh, implements mm -hmm. to do so. So they responded. And they didn't know this person because it was, this was the next village, the village yeah. called Busoso. Uh -huh. It was not Kisa itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so these people responded and they could see the damage that he was uh, inflicting, inflicting on this on lady. lady. And they attacked him. The attack was so vicious, but he managed to run away. But he had been cut on the back so badly. So as he was running and they were uh, following him, he crossed River Yala. And there's a, there's a, there's a kind of a hill there. Mm -hmm. So with the loss of blood, uh, the man collapsed. They caught up with him. And as you say, they chopped him to pieces. Mm -hmm. And that's how we get that song that uh, uh, Akwabi and Malenya sang uh, later on, Wali Mukata, Kama Muti wa Kujenga Yumba. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, do you um, have just to mm -hmm. add on to the story, I mm -hmm. mean, it's pretty ironic um, in my view um, that, um, you know, George Mukabi sang good things about women. <laughs> <laughs> You know, them. Yes, yeah. supported them and everything. And yet he, he, he was a pretty violent man, even to his own women. Mm -hmm. um, he sang about, you know, being careful with alcohol and, and all that. But he, he liked his alcohol mm -hmm. way too much. Mm -hmm. So such contrast, and it's, it's, it's common even in, uh, in the creative, yeah. in the arts, in the music scene today. Mm -hmm. So... I guess so it's a question of preaching water and drinking wine. Professor, yeah. I don't know if you have any last um, words to add on before we wrap up the show. Yes, I think uh, when you look at George Mukabe and during his time, at that time, late 50s, early 60s, I would describe Mukabe as a tragic hero a tragic musical hero. Mm -hmm. Now, when you study music, mm -hmm. when you study philosophy, when you study literature, when you study mythology, you find such characters. Mm -hmm. And I think George Mukabe is indeed a hero, mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. musical hero, a great teacher, a great artist, but a tragic one mm -hmm. at that. Thank you so much, Professor. Really a pleasure to have you. I think you have raised very important um, questions that many people are usually a bit hesitant to pose, but we hope the right people will listen to your message and do um, the needful. Thank you so much, you. Celeste, as well. We're very proud of you, and we hope that you're also mentoring younger um, female cartoonists to take over from you. Uh, absolutely. Thank you so much. Mado, as usual, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to have conversations the with you. is all mine. All right. Um, I think one thing that we've taken from this conversation is that we cannot run away from our dynasty. We cannot run away from our culture. And that's a challenge to a lot of young upcoming artists that we need to go back and look at our culture and see how we can make, uh, make it better. And to play us out is the Nairobi City Ensemble performing BB by George Mukabi. I have been your host, Lucy Lado. Until next time, good night. Yota kunili pata mkole ufisha Ili nikumbusha inala mama ya Ili nikumbusha inala mama shikobe Naona watu wengi wana siku bibi zao Naona watu wengi wana siku bibi zao Eti wanasema anashinda mama yake Eti wanasema anashinda mama yake Naona watu wengi wana siku bibi zao Naona watu
watu wengi wanasubibia Eti wanasema anashinda mama yake Eti wanasema anashinda mama yake Lakini kumbuka weli yule mama yake Alikupela kwa tumbo mpaka miezi tisa Zipo kuisha nipo wakakusa Alipo kusa kina kakusomesha Ndiyoko kapata madu kawa wabibi Kwa hivyo kumbuka mama ndiyo mzuri Kefa kocha nalia mama isita Halimu wacha akiwa ngali mtoto Halikuwa na bibi halipa katapu sana Halikuwa na bibi halipa katapu sana Kwa hivu kumbuke mama diyo mzuri Kwa hivu kumbuke mama diyo mzuri journey through Shades of Benga continues. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on our social media platforms for the next episodes. Shades of Benga, the book, is available in all leading bookstores in Kenya. Get your copy for this and other stories in full. Mambo Vipi, Mambo Vipi.